I'm about as real as they come. All my beats tailored by Drew. Drew. House Digital. Maserati, Rick, and Detroit. Deep. Convertible bird in Miami. Yo. Graduated summa cum laude. Strip club made a tsunami. Black. Carlton Hines with the ball game. Black. Rayful Edmonds with the snowflakes. No. Craig Pettis in the M Town. Sal Magluta with the boat game. <laughs> Falcone with the cocaine. Uh. Like Freeway Ricky with the plug game. Uh. Like Monster Cody in South Central. Uh. Larry Davis from Close uh. Range. They didn't find a grenade, they found C4. C4 in a garbage can. But it was C4 that they found in the garbage can. Um, and they locked up the whole park. You know, like the whole park got locked up. Um, they stopped um, MTA buses on um, Rogers Avenue and emptied out the, emptied out the buses and um, loaded the buses with everybody that was in the park. Police surrounded the whole block, all over. No one could leave the park. Everybody got locked up. Tip top, the most hated, group of the most wanted, flat was most wanted. And this is what we gonna do. This is story, this is history. This is my block. Came out here, you know, this is where I, this is where I raised the things for tunnels. If you wasn't built, you couldn't walk through it. Spade was dark. We call this park side, AKA dark side. The truth. You know I mean? Anybody who know about Flatbush know about Park Shaw, know about Tip Top, know about Park Shaw, know about Flatbush. I made it, my nigga, 40 years old. I never even thought about this number, but I'm here. You hear me? Took 10, took 10 shots three different times. Went to, went to prison, my nigga. I gave back 12 to life, nigga. You hear me? 12 to life. And I'm here. You ready, my nigga? I'm here. Shutting it down. Proving the odds. Proving the odds wrong. I thank everybody, all the females that's been supporting me. Parkside, Flatbush, 90s, East New York. You already know. Crown Heights, Ben Star, Brownsville. Max, King of the Hood, UK all day on the block. Parkside, kick back at the Alpines on the base front too. That's what it is. Hey, boy, I make this. I make this. That's a big yeah. yeah. I look around. We the only niggas with that A1 pair. Shake eight Amber want to say something to the crowd. And Brooklyn is the birthplace of my mother. So I haven't been here in a long time, but it feels good to be back. And thank you all for having me. March 5th, March 6th is my birthday. The Moose, Amber Rose is in the building. You're going to see the footage. King of Kings. The Kings is in the building. And, and that's what it is. Happy G Day, Tip Top. Happy G Day, Tip that I made Society Magazine front cover. That's what it is. It's a, it's a new beginning, it's a new journey. Tip top, the most hated, Brooklyn most wanted, Flatbush most wanted. Yo, yo, we back. It's your boy Pop Lot. Mob Ties. We on our way to NYC with it. Headshot City. Brooklyn to be exact. Flatbush to be more exact. All my guys from Flappish, y'all get in the comment box. Y'all know how we run it. Clark's in between Bedford and Rogers. Y'all know the rundown. Now, today, we are going to be covering somebody I probably should have been covered. Definitely infamous in the Brooklyn section, the Flatbush section of Brooklyn for so many levels. And the guy that I'm talking about is going to be Ricardo Tip Top Johnson. 
and Ricardo Tip Top Johnson hails from the Flatbush area of Panamanian descent. He's actually from Parkside Avenue for those that are familiar with Flatbush. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with Flatbush, I'm going to try to do my best to break it down to you. Now, I've been through or I've been to so many parts of Brooklyn, East New York, Coney Island, Fort Greene, bed -Stuy. Like I have family that stayed in all of these areas, so I would frequent them. Now, Flatbush is totally different from any of those areas that I named. Now, anybody from Brooklyn, y'all get in the comment box and explain why Flatbush is different. Now, the, the main thing that I noticed, I moved to Flatbush. I lived, I was born in East New York, 772 Dumont between Miller and Bradford, right across the street from Miller Park. Shout out my East New York guys. Um, so I moved to Flatbush in 1991, right? Or maybe 1992, I could be mistaken. But when I first got there, I immediately knew or I immediately noticed that just the people were different. And what made them different, it seems like they were all almost a majority from the Caribbean. So somebody being naive, kind of like I was, you would probably just assume that everybody was Jamaican or from Jamaica. But what I quickly noticed was it was people from so many different places like Grenada, Trinidad, Panamania, Tobago, Guyana, I, and I know I'm missing some because it's just that many, but it was almost like a hub for the Caribbean. They had an avenue called Flatbush Avenue that almost kind of rivaled downtown Brooklyn or any kind of shopping district that you, you might know where they would have stores on both sides of the streets. It's a two-way street. They would have what is called the dollar van that would ride up and down. You can almost, from where I live that you could have rode it from my block on Flatbush all the way down to downtown Brooklyn where you got Albee Square Mall, the infamous Albee Square Mall. And if you ride it the opposite way, it used to ride you all the way to King's Plaza where it was like another big shopping mall. Definitely like the 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 shopping mall of Flatbush. That's where you go. That's where shit was happening at. Besides downtown Brooklyn, it's like anywhere you could have went. But so that was the main thing that kind of stood out to me when I moved there. And the name that I would hear a lot or the, definitely the most infamous name I would hear would be Tip Top. I remember when I, the first time I met my homeboy, still down to this day, shout out my name, Ray, down in South Carolina he kind of would put me on to a guy named tip top and he would talk about this game called uk and after a while i learned that uk stood for united kings and it was almost like i want to say a gang of pretty much the nationalities that i named and i would never forget the first time i would have a cross running with tip top i would be i, I would say probably like 13 probably maybe 14 and i'm gonna go to a chinese restaurant that's located on rogers avenue between parkside and clarkson so this is right on the corner of my block is right next door to a store that was owned by a dude named miguel a drunk dude almost everybody in the store be drunk type shit like you go in that bitch and you pay ten dollars for some he give you change twenty dollars back like yo you just never knew but um, so I'm going in there to get some food. I'm almost sure for my mom, my, probably my little brother, my sister. And as soon as I turn the corner, I see like six or seven big niggas in this bitch. So I'm like, okay, I step in here and I place my order. And so they out here, they talking, they talking like, wow, wow shit. I, I almost can't imagine. Um, they tagging up the place, like writing markers, writing UK. So this goes on for like five minutes, like the longest five minutes of my life. I'm like on the side, I'm like new to the area. And then this is like, I'm not even thinking gunplay at this time. This is like, and even if I did, I'm mean, was way strapped up more than me. I can guarantee that. But 
I'm just chilling to the side, just waiting. So they get their order, and as they leave, heckling kind of the Chinese people, he tip top peeks his head back into the restaurant and say, Hey, shorty, watch them while they're making your food. Man, I got to the counter so fast. It was just like everything that I had heard had came right there in fruition. And it would be years later that I would I would find out that we was almost close, similar in ages because we would attend the same high school. And it would be another story that would be an infamy that I would never forget. So after that, I would hear the names and I would hear the rumblings. But I noticed like right around at that time in New York City, that's when I would hear about bloods and crips and i didn't really hear about crips no now i'm gonna break this down from my perspective i was there i was tuned in i had boots on the ground so the first time i ever heard anything and this is on a street level as far as bloods and crips in new york is i was in bad style and i'll never forget i was with my cousin d he locked up right now for a body shout out d shout out my cousin sean now I was with them and he was with a dude named I want to say his name was Blair. I, I ain't never really going to forget this because he was he was kind of talking doing most of the talking. My cousin never really talked a lot, um, but he kept saying, oh, 31. And I the, for some reason, I'm thinking Wu Tang, old dirty bastard. Uh, I didn't throw no I couldn't connect it at that time. So I go out with them. And um, we pretty much pull an all-nighter. I want to say I'm like 15, 16. I'm visiting New York. My mom kicked me out from school shit. I'm going to get into it. Like this whole situation with Tip Top, it kind of all tie in. So I'm visiting. I'm kicking it with my cousins. Damn, best out. They live on Green. I can't remember what block they live in between. I remember Quincy, but I can't. Remember, I knew Roosevelt Projects was not that far from where we was. And it was a corner store, like right on the corner next door to the building they lived in. Across the street from 26th Park. I want to say Malcolm X was on the other side of 26th Park. But that style was not my home turf. I just played out there with my family. Now, so that night would go on. And they would pretty much be talking the old 31 shit the whole night. Now, it, fast forward a couple months later, it was a big ass jail sweep where New York has sweeped or swept a bunch of bloods from out the prison system or something like that. And my other cousin that got tied in with the murder of my cousin D, Sean was actually on the news and my family was saying how oh he had these red laces and it blew my mind because I'm 15 years old, New York really never had that kind of gangs um and fast forward i want to say almost three to four years later you would hear stories how the bloods was wild and cutting people all of this through the city on the train slashing people faces and my neighborhood at the time flatbush was pretty much neutral uk the gang that I want to say Tip Top was the leader of and probably was the one that started the gang because his name was synonymous with this gang. That was the only gang and you really wouldn't see them like talking about it. It'd be like they'd be like ghosts almost unless you wouldn't see them unless you had to see them. Um, and they would congregate in a park, 92 Park, um, which is really infamous and Flatbush itself. And it kind of ties into this story. Um, because, like I said, my neighborhood was neutral. We started to hear rumblings and stories. Oh, the Bloods are coming to Flatbush to recruit. The Bloods are coming to Flatbush to recruit. So I would be on this block, Lenox, between New York and Rogers. And pretty much everybody would be outside. And we would almost be prepared uh, for that shit. Because we would hear the type of shit that them niggas was on. So during the course of this it's almost like one day i went upstairs and went to sleep and the next day i came downstairs and that same block that i was chilling on that did not have one gang member almost the whole block pretty much formed a group 
called CFK. I want to say it was called Crooklyn Finest Kings at the time. And it was almost littered. They would wear these like orange and blue flags, almost like Nick colors. And that shit changed over the span of one summer. It was, it could have been 96, 97 or 98. I can't even remember. And just, that shit was many months ago. But one day they had a block party on Linux. Probably the only block party that they ever had. Anybody that was there, y'all get in the comment box. I know y'all remember this shit. So it went from not having any crips in the city to I remember going to this block party and it was like 200 to 400 crips just at the block party alone. And it would come out that Tip Top was supposedly the leader of the whole shit. I want to say it was rumors that UK converted to Crip and pretty much he was one of those individuals that pretty much people going to follow him because he had that kind of aura around him. And I remember being in Prospect Heights with him the next time I crossed paths. We were cutting class. We was in like this kind of corridor that leads to the gymnasium and skipping, trying to stay out the way of security. Because in New York, they had like security guards roaming around and all that shit. So it's me and my homeboy. It was like probably like 20 people. But we all in different packs. It's nobody like we're not all together. But we just in the same space. So me and my homeboy just chilling. It's probably like some other people with us. It's another group. And it's another section that got tip top in it. And we overhear him talking about a story. Or we hear a dude he would talking about a story about a tech nine and his cousin at another school. We we can't remember what school. So after this go on and the conversation go on for ten minutes. One the one thing I hear and the last thing I remember is tip top saying Hey, won't you call homeboy over here so we could take the tech now? And that, at that time, me being a freshman, that's like a little bit before I got kicked out, sent to Miami. I'm like, wow, this shit is wild. The school you go into, if you've never been to a New York high school, that shit is like going through an airport today. And this was in 1998. You had to have like a special card you put in this fucking machine that would tell you happy birthday and a New Year birthday. You put your bag through like this shit that can see everything in your bag. And then you would get wanded down. That shit was just wow. Almost like East Side High type shit. Shout out to Prospect Heights, man. Anybody that went to Prospect Heights, especially around that time, y'all get in the comment box and explain that this shit is no lies. Now, years would pass and it would have rumors that Tip Top would be arrested. And on January 29th, 2002, the New York Post would report that a group of dope peddling gun smugglers headed by a notorious street gang leader authorities called the One Man Crime Spree was rounded up running a high powered weapons up and down the East Coast. And they're going to name Tip Top as that one man crime spree. And they're going to say he was probably the most well-known and intimidating person in his little world and they would name that the blood and crips world and that was according to david acres now he would end up i'm not sure if this is the charge that they would get him on but he would end up serving or sentenced to a 12 to life sentence um where i want to say i talked to him on the phone like recently and he said he was facing almost up to 40 years on that charge so anybody that ever been locked up on a anything to life charge, they know that's one of the hardest charges to get off. You're always going to the parole board. They're probably denying you a lot of the times. And he also was shot 10 times on two different occasions. This is not to mention the stories that we were here when I first moved there. Of somebody climbing up or a gang of guys climbing up his fire escape, trying to kill him. And he's shooting one of the guys and just the beef that they would say he would have with the Franklin Ave or the, like rumors they'd be like oh UK is beefing with Franklin Ave and our school was like located right there so it's like almost like Crown Heights and Flatbush is connected um, by a series of roads and that shit is just so crazy and the gang rivalry is just 
to the point where I knew some dudes that went to another school that I didn't that I didn't go to. I went to a school I had sixty one lefts. I know some dudes that went to Jackie Robinson that once they graduated from there, they had to pretty much drop out of school because New York, if you not on your shit, not getting your grades, you not getting accepted to these high schools that you might apply to and you get zoned to the nearest one. And I know some people that got zoned to Prospect Heights and they was beefing with some dudes from that area and they pretty much either had to drop out of school or do some dramatic shit to try to change what they was doing because that would be a long way home every day. Now I could go on and on about the folklore stories that I heard because there's so many stories and rumors. Some saying how he went from the Crips to the Bloods when he was in jail, how he was beefing with Dipset, but he's definitely still making his mark on the world. He's probably like the number one party promoter in Brooklyn, if not the entire New York City. He always have events. I want to say he pretty much had the whole cast of love and hip hop at his birthday parties going the last couple years. He running a very successful party promoting company called DTN or he's a part of them. So y'all make sure y'all tap in with him. I want to say his Instagram is I am King Tip Top DTN. And anybody that know him, kind of y'all go show love, show support. And if y'all want to go to a party in New York City, that's where y'all going to be able to find one. Y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. I'm going to be back with some more real trill spill shit. Y'all make sure y'all hit the bell right under this video. If y'all know anything about this time span or this time frame I'm talking about, y'all know where y'all go with it. And y'all get at me. Let me know where we need to go, who we need to cover, who we missed. Email me, call me, CC me, text me, tweet me, direct message me. However y'all want to handle it. I'm here for all of it. It's your boy Pop-A-Lot. Mob, 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 ties.